day. Welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okoro. The Nigerian Senate has given the Ministry of Petroleum and all relevant agencies an ultimatum of two weeks to end the ongoing fuel scarcity and price discrepancies in the country. The directive was given by the Chairman Senate Committee on Downstream Petroleum, Senator Uche Ekunife, who also directed the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry to do everything within its jurisdiction to ensure that fuel is not only made available, but sold at government-approved prices. The Senate had on Tuesday mandated the committee to urgently examine all the issues associated with the current scarcity of petroleum products in the country. Given the directive, when officials of the ministry came to explain the cause of the scarcity, Ekunife said that what Nigerians needed was to see an end to this untold hardship and not listen to stories from stakeholders. Five Polish sailors have been captured by kidnappers after a cargo ship belonging to a Polish company was attacked off the Nigerian coast, authorities said on Friday. Polish Foreign Minister we told Wasa Skowski told a news conference on Friday that the kidnappers had not made development demands so far. He confirmed that Poland was working with Nigerian authorities but would not get involved directly unless when they were asked to do so. No traces of blood were discovered on the ship, which operates under the Cyprus flag, he said. The kidnapped sailors included the captain and officers of the ship. Poland says the incident highlights the need to review safety procedures of vessels operating in the area. The Senate has passed a resolution urging the federal government to immortalize the late former governor, of Kogi State Abu Bakr Audu, who died on Sunday, November 23rd, before the conclusion of the Kogi State governorship election. The Senate, in, its, in his honor, observed a minute silence and resolved to send a high-powered delegation to Kogi State to condole with the people, government, and the family of the deceased. Fam for, um, federal lawmakers eulogized the late Abu Bakr Audu, describing him as a man of the people who left indelible marks on the sands of time in Kogi State, where he served as governor. His death makes, the makes it the first time in the history of the country that a leading governorship candidate will be announced dead just before the verdict of the contest. There was a lot of propaganda, lies against this man when he was alive. One was that Prince Abakar Audu embezzled 11 billion naira in Kogi states. I want to inform the Senate that in four years of his stewardship as governor of Kogi State between 1999 and 2003, all that accrued to Kogi State from the Federation account was 17 billion naira, out of which he built the Confluence Beach, built Kogi State University, built the Kogi State Polytechnic, built a stadium, road networks, and paid salaries and allowances of civil servants in Gogi State for four years. So I begin to ask the question, having done all this, how can he take 11 billion out of 17 billion? He was loved by all, both those who voted for him and those who did not vote for him. And as a matter of fact, his, his uh, stature in politics transcended Gogi State, and we all admired him. So I stand here to worry about the serious continual demise of former governors, as listed out by my brother, <laughs> former governor of Kano State, governor of Guangwazo. And the question I ask is, who next? Because even when he was not in office, he continued to do his best for the people of Kogi State. And a lot of us have been to elections. For a man to be able to come back and win election, this was of over 22 de decades. It's not an easy feat. Nigeria's main opposition party, the PDP, has rejected the decision of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to allow the ruling All Progressives Congress field another candidate in the supplementary election in Kogi State. The party made its position known in a statement at the end of its national caucus meeting, saying that the decision which INEC had taken on the matter was completely against the Nigerian constitution. The party also called for the immediate resignation of the INEC chairman and its national commissioners. The caucus completely rejects the decision of INEC in yielding to the unlawful prompting of the clearly partisan Attorney General of the Federation, Malam Abubakar Malami, to allow APC 
to substitute a candidate in the middle of an election, even when such has no place in the Constitution and the Electoral Act. Insists that with the death of his candidate, Prince Abubakar Audu, the APC has legally crashed out of the governorship race as no known law or constitutional provision allows the substituting of candidates once the ballot process has commenced. Caucus insists that with the unfortunate death of Prince Abubakar Audu, the APC has no valid candidate in the election, leaving INEC with no other lawful option than to declare the PDP candidate, Captain Idris Wada, as the winner of the election. Leaders of the All Progressives Congress in Kogi East Senatorial District have nominated Mohamed Audu, the first son of Abubakar Audu, to replace his father as the party's governorship candidate. The senior Audu died on Sunday just as it became clear he was leading in the Kogi governorship election which held on Saturday. The APC is to conduct a fresh primary to choose a replacement for the late Audu. The Kogi leaders who made their decision known in Lokoja on Thursday after a meeting said they chose Mohamed Audu after due consultations. Their spokesman Daniel Issa, who is the vice chairman of APC in Kogi East, said they had resolved and were determined to back Mohamed Audu to replace his father when the National Working Committee orders fresh primaries. The Nigerian Senate has confirmed the appointment of Umar Dambata as the Executive Vice Chairman and the Chief Executive of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. The Senate also confirmed the appointment of Ahmed Lawan Kuru as the Managing Director of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON. Both men were confirmed after they were successfully screened by the Senate Committee on Communications and the Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and Financial Institutions, respectively. Director General of the National Agency of the Control of AIDS, John Idoko, has called for increased funding and support to combat HIV transmission. He said this was in line with the new World Health Organization guidelines, which recommended tests and treatment. About 2.25 million will be replaced on treatment. To meet this, Idoko said about 2.9 million for 2016. He also said national health insurance could be another way to ensure that funding was made available for the treatment of AIDS in the country. We have also made significant progress. Um, at the last count, we were nearly 800,000. For the first time last year, we were able to test about 8 million Nigerians. And I think nearly 7 million, you know, uh, received their tests, and I'm sure that a good number of them who were positive were linked up to treatment. PMTCD has been one of our major headaches, but I think that in the last, last two years, we all sitting here and various partners who are not here have contributed immensely to, reduct, to the reduction in the transmission of um, HIV from HIV positive pregnant mothers to their children. Last year, out of the five, six million women who are pregnant in the country, we were able to test well over three million. And 63,000 of them, more than 63,000 of them who were positive, uh, access antiretroviral care. I think that that for us, if you look behind and see what we're doing in the past, has been a huge uh, progress that we have made. No wonder we have also seen a decline in the prevalence in 2010, our prevalence was about 4.1% uh, on the average nationally uh, through the antenatal surveys. In 2012, uh, the NAS survey showed <coughs> a 3.4% in the general population. But we see clearly from a number of our programmatic data now that our prevalence is hovering around 2%. But I must also warn that in the States that are heavily burdened, we, have, we still have a slightly higher average of somewhere between 2.5 and 8 percent. So I think that we have made substantial progress, but a lot needs to be done. Twelve journalists have emerged as finalists in the 2015 edition of the 10th anniversary of the Wallace Schoenka Award for Investigative Reporting, the center said on Friday. 
Motorayo Alaka, the center's coordinator, in a statement disclosed this. According to the Wale Shoinka Center, the winning stories were selected out of a total of 130 entries by a panel of judges. The panel was chaired by veteran broadcaster Bimbo Uluyede. Security agencies and Nigerians have been advised to show a high level of respect and regards to media practitioners in order to ensure a more robust national security in the country. This was the core of the paper delivered by the former DG NTA, Tony Iradia, at a one-day seminar on the role of the media in security reporting. While delivering a paper on the topic, Close the Security Gaps, a guest lecturer called on Nigerian security agencies to build their confidence and shun all acts of impunity and lawlessness. Freshly targeted at all Nigerians so that we will identify and play our role in complementing the military and other security agencies involved in the fight against insurgency and other crimes in our country. What we are doing is to ensure that citizens believe, believe and take it upon themselves to decide, discharge certain key functions within the Nigeria space. Now this continuation will enable us to interact with journalists in a specialized kind of way so that the discharge of our functions we will not just play our role of informing citizens or educating them in some cases in the citizens but we will also join in mobilizing citizens and recruiting them to play in this critical role in national uh, development. Take a short break now. When we come back, we'll look at business and international stories. Please don't go away. <laughs> Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. You're watching TV360 News now to business stories. Crude oil futures fell on Friday, bringing losses this month to close to 9% as disappointing Chinese data and worries over supply glots overshadows job political concerns. Brent crude fell by 60 cents to $44.86 per barrel, while U.S. crude benchmark fell by $1 to $42.04 a barrel. Both crude contracts were on track for small weekly gains, but were down by roughly 9% since the beginning of November. France held a national memorial service for the 130 people who died in the Paris attacks two weeks ago. Around 1,000 people are attending the service in central Paris, including President Francois Hollande, survivors of the attacks, and victim families. A minute silence has been held, and the names of all the victims were read out. Attackers with assault rifles and suicide belts targeted a number of sites in the capital. Islamic State later said it was behind the multiple assaults. In a series of coordinated attacks on 13th November, the gunmen opened fire on restaurants bars in the city and stormed a concert hall where 89 people were shot dead. Three more attackers blew themselves up outside the Stade de France Stadium in Saint-Denis north of Paris after staff denied them entry to a football match between France and Germany. More than 350 people were injured in the attacks which have been described as the worst in recent French history. Turkish Prime Minister Ahmed Dafutoglu has said Ankara will work with Russia and other allies to calm tensions after Turkey shut down a Russian warplane. Writing in the UK Times newspaper, Dafutoglu stressed that fighting Islamic State was the country's main priority. He also said Turkey must protect its serving territory. Russia says a Turkish F-16 fighter jet shot down one of its Su-24 bombers over Syria on Tuesday. 
Turkey says the bomber violated its airspace. The plane crashed into a mountainside in a rebel-held area close to the Turkish border. One of the two Russian pilots was killed by gunfire as he parachuted from the burning jets, while the other pilot was rescued by Russian and Syrian special forces. Tension has sharply escalated between Ankara and Moscow over the incident with Russian President Vladimir Putin warning of serious consequences. The IAAF has announced that the All-Russian Athletics Federation, ARAF, has accepted its ban from athletics. The IAAF can to disclose this in a statement after its meeting in Monaco with the crisis surrounding doping and connected corruption being the number one item on the agenda. Russia was banned after the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, recommended that the IAAF suspend the ARAF from competing in Rio 2016 following its investigations which reported that the Russian Federation helped athletes cover up doping offenses. The International Association of Athletics Federation has named American athlete Ashton Eaton and Ethiopia's Jenzebe Dibaba as the 2015 World Athletes of the Year. Both athletes were rewarded for their achievements at the 2015 IAAF World Championships in Beijing in which they both set world record in their various disciplines. Eaton became the first decathlete to win the Male World Athlete of the Year award after his spectacular performance in the Chinese capital, while Dibaba set a world indoor 5,000-meter record of 14.18 seconds and was then unbeaten in her five 1,500-meter races during the summer in Beijing. We've come to the end of news now. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Thelma Okuru.